My name is Padrica Mendez. I am a teacher with Duval County Public Schools. 25 year veteran teacher, I might want to add. I live in the neighborhood of Hollybrook. It borders Mixontown, which is a historically black neighborhood which was settled by ex-slaves. And this neighborhood was primarily uh, started right after the Great Fire around the time of uh, a lot of the housing boom and World War I ended. A lot of people moved here for jobs and, and whatnot. So. With nearly one million residents, Jacksonville is Florida's most populous city. It is home to three naval facilities, major port infrastructure, and Florida's longest river, the St. John's. Jacksonville is also a highly diverse city, with 43% of the population composed of people of color, 31% specifically being made up of black residents. Like many cities, Jacksonville is experiencing worsening climate impacts, especially from flooding. Whenever it rains or we have a really bad, you know, storm hurricane, this area floods a lot. People who live along McCoy Boulevard constantly having to, um, you know, redo their homes or that kind of stuff. I worry about erosion. Nationally, flooding is becoming more frequent, intense, and unpredictable, costing nearly eight billion each year. Coastal cities like Jacksonville must address flooding on both the coast and inland due to sea level rise, more intense rainfall, and stronger hurricanes. In Jacksonville, this flood risk falls disproportionately on certain segments of the population. And this risk is projected to rise in the coming decades, especially in the Southeast. Historic racist zoning, development practices, and policies, including redlining, development of the interstate highway system and industry expansion divided and confined black communities in Jacksonville's north side, while white communities expanded throughout the rest of the city. The effects of redlining are still visible in places like the north side, where neighborhoods face higher risk from chronic underinvestment in public services. So the McCoy's Creek neighborhoods have been impacted forever. Just regular rain floods that neighborhood. Well, I think definitely restoring the creek and bringing back uh, some of the natural environment is going to be very positive uh, for this neighborhood. The city is leading a number of nature-based projects with the help from local groups like Groundwork Jacksonville. In the mid-1990s, the EPA and the National Park Service founded Groundwork USA specifically to clean up urban land and waterways and create green spaces and parks within the urban areas of cities. The McCoy's Creek restoration effort has secured funding to naturally restore the flow by reconnecting the creek to its wetlands. This will improve water quality, create habitat for birds, fish, wildlife, and provide parks and recreational access. McCoy's Creek will also be part of the Emerald Trail, a series of walkways and parks that will circle the urban core and link historic neighborhoods to downtown, the river, and Hogan and McCoy's Creeks. McCoy's Creek is a prime example of how the mayor and the city leadership are investing in local planning solutions to support communities that have faced disproportionate and exacerbated flooding from industrial development. The key is resident engagement, is to really understand and engage people who live in those neighborhoods. And so when you really understand their dreams and their hopes for their neighborhood, then we make sure that they have a voice. We partner with Liz, try to get money to help people improve their homes. In Jacksonville, we can see the importance of placing equity at the center of flood risk reduction and locally led resilience planning. So to us, it's about environmental justice, social justice. Our 
really big vision is that long-term residents get to remain and prosper as a result of our work. So that means we're building more than a trail and restoring creeks. Taking a one-size-fits-all approach for reducing flood risk can increase systemic and historical inequities that do not adequately address climate impacts. More than four years after Hurricane Irma, many impacted neighborhoods still lack resources and funding to recover and build resilience to future storms fueled by climate change. Hurricane Irma was really a wake-up call for Jacksonville in, in September of 2017. This area really hadn't been hit by a hurricane since uh, Hurricane Dora in the, in the mid-60s. And even though Irma really didn't make landfall in Duval County, it, it caused tremendous damage. Federal funding from sources such as FEMA's Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities Program aims in addressing growing climate risks including natural infrastructure before the next storm hits. At the same time, this program has a particular focus on prioritizing projects that also build equity. Natural infrastructure can address current and future flood risks. It can help improve quality of life in all communities, especially those located in nature-deprived regions. The city of Jacksonville, its mayor, and city leadership are embarking on a number of significant proactive steps to address climate challenges and keep all communities safe. Jacksonville recently hired a chief resilience officer to guide resilience planning and implementation efforts. They also emphasize the use of a social justice and equity lens to develop resilience solutions and better allocate public resources. It also shows how the city is proactively addressing current and future climate impacts. This is probably gonna be a place where everybody would, you know, be able to access, um, you know, a natural, beautiful setting. And then it will also help bridge the gap and bring Jacksonville together. I think the Emerald Trail is going to transform our urban core. It's going to mix people together, you know, that have been segregated for decades in, in Jacksonville. And I think our, our, our neighborhoods along the trail will, will have younger people and in a diverse mix of people uh, will have more affordable housing and more economic development. Imagine that those 10 neighborhoods get to know each other and understand solutions and can come to pull together to have a more powerful coalition. Smart, targeted, and equitable natural infrastructure like the McCoy's Creek Restoration and Emerald Trail can generate benefits such as jobs through general maintenance, increasing water quality, supporting public health through recreational space, and reducing urban heat with more green space all while lessening the impacts of flooding from sea level rise, rainfall, and storm surge. If done correctly, natural infrastructure projects can work for local communities and help to address a long history of systemic environmental injustices. I can see, you know, this neighborhood improving by leaps and bounds. I see this, like I said, uh, being a place where everybody is included and just being um, a beautiful setting where we can just come together and enjoy and, and, and be a bright spot in Jacksonville. Policymakers can not only learn from, but they can help expand on solutions like the McCoy's Creek Restoration. They will act as a model for future nature-based projects. By supporting nature-based features in statewide resilience planning, Florida can better protect its residents from growing climate impacts and help create a more equitable and prosperous future for all residents. All while keeping Florida, Florida.